hello lovely people and welcome back to Tarot Tuesday. So if I look like I'm sitting slightly oddly, um, it's because I've broken myself. I have uh, slipped and done something to my neck and then I tripped and did something else to the same thing. So I'm stiff as a board and, and I feel like an idiot. However, so, <laughs> so if I look very rigid, that's why. But we get through, don't we? Right, so Tarot Tuesdays, staying largely on topic. Let's see what happens. Today we are going to talk about the Earth Magic Oracle Deck by Stephen D. Farmer. And as is normal, we will, sorry, feel like an old lady. Um, and as is normal, we will, we will start with the facts. Right, okay, so this is a, got my little box here. This is a uh, 48, card deck with a 170 page book. Now this deck came out in 2009 and it is published by Hay House. I have had it probably that long. Um, it is a good solid, good solid stock, the gift box, because I mean it's sort of 10, 11 years old so mine has lasted really, really well. Um, the box is in a gloss finish, the book is in a gloss finish and the cards are all in a gloss finish. So as I've said before, with, um, I'm sure I've probably said before, that when you get really high gloss and shiny cards, they do sometimes sort of stick. And when you're trying to, to kind of shuffle them, so like that, they, they just kind of go down as a whole and they stick together and a little bit of uh, flour, a little bit of corn flour, rub it between your fingertips and just kind of work it through the deck it does help to loosen it up. But in some cases, it it just takes time to kind of, to get everything smooth and kind of, you know, free flowing as it were. So there's that. Um, the guidebook breaks down with sort of a standard format. So it gives you a, a couple of different spreads that you can try first and then it gives you the explanations on the cards in the rest. At the beginning of the book what's nice about this one is that it also tells you um, da -da -da, it also gives you a really nice write-up on how to prepare your deck so that's nice if you've never owned or bought a deck before it's 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 something nice to try. The There's a spread in here for there's a cross spread, a five card cross, cross spread. And this one is really, really nice. It's kind of nice and simple and straightforward. And if you've got a particular issue that you wanna kind of get sorted, then this is a nice way to do it. So the there's a notes section in the back and the cards are laid out in alphabetical order. They are not numbered and <laughs> one of the things I will say about this deck is that they are laid out, oh, let me move out the way, sorry. They are laid out in alphabetical order by the big word at the top, not the little word underneath. So don't go rummaging around like I did. The, I remember doing it the first time, sitting there thinking, what on earth is happening? Actually, I'm going to check that now. Yeah, no, I am right. <laughs> right, okay. So that's the basics. Stephen D. Farmer is, um, he writes, oh, my brain, the spirit animal kind of dictionary, basically. And if you've, if you've watched any of my videos before, I've had the, the, spirit, the, the spirit animal guide. I've had the book for years and it is one that I go back to again and again and again. However, I've got a, a, just a thought process, I suppose, as I've got ready to make this video today is that Stephen Farmer is a uh, shamanic practitioner, um, hypnotherapist, a sort of Reiki guide, and his, he tends to, from what I have bought, tends to work largely with animals, animal spirits, and kind of within the animal kingdom. And I don't know how that goes down with kind of, sort of cultural appropriation because and this is just more of a this is more of a conversation than uh than a dig or anything controversial because it's something that I've thought about as I flicked through the deck today 
there is a real um, indigenous sort of vibe to his to all his decks and cards. There is something very kind of shamanic, and I don't know a great deal about his backstory. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if there's current opinion going on within the community that I don't know anything about. I have had this deck for a number of years. It is a nice deck and I thought it would be nice to review it. Um, however, if you have really strong opinions or an understanding that perhaps I haven't covered, do feel free to leave me comments down below. And I mean, it's it's a conversation, isn't it? So um, this deck is what I found is really inclusive. So there is, there's what I would class as, oh, sorry, my light. There is what I would class as kind of very modern cards and a very modern way of life that you can see on the cards. There is, I'm just gonna look for them and find them now. I'm really conscious making this video that I wanna get my my language right and my explanations right so I don't um, offend or upset anyone, really. So he also uses um, lots of Native American imagery with inside the decks as well. And the, 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 the decks have a real shamanic energy, they do. Um, but I think he, you know, remembering that this deck was printed back in 2009, he goes out of his way to make sure that the decks are as inclusive as he can, as he can possibly be. So the artwork spans lots of different cultures that we would recognise, which I'm going to take as positive. He also uses um, imagery that appeals to lots of different faith paths as well. So this one is really speaks of kind of druid, pagan, Celtic imagery to me. Um, and mixed in with all of these things is, let me give you the other one. See what I mean about lots of different cultures. Um, and then I'm just gonna show you the, the ones, so again, that has a real kind of spiritual crystal yoga. So there's, there is lots and lots of different walks of life and walks of belief included. Wrapped in with all of these cards is lots and lots and lots of earth and animal Show you these ones, earth and animal images, which gives you, for instance, oh, for instance, so that's the rain card. So you get the seasons mixed in as well, and then the tide mixed in as well. So you're getting all parts of of kind of of the earth of, of Gaia of the divine. We're getting all the parts of everything. So in and amongst all these, I'll show you all the ones, make sure I'm not in the way. That's the back of the card as well. I'll just show you the back of the card quickly. Um, so in and amongst all these, the descriptions break down. So the first card that I showed you, which I said was very kind of very modern, it gave to a very kind of modern, up-to-date kind of lifestyle. The if we go if we go to the book, so you get a picture of the card um, and then the card's name, the new moon and the promise. And then you get two types of text. So you are getting roughly two pages to each explanation for each card, for each explanation. So you're getting a standard font and then a font in italics. So the standard font, font is giving you a brief description um, of the card and kind of an explanation of the symbolism and what it's trying to tell you. And then underneath in italics is kind of the what this, what, what it actually applies to. 
So normal font explanation and symbolism and then in italics is the message if you like. Um, and it, it's really quite straightforward. So for instance the, the, the young couple sat looking out over the sea is this is the time to launch a new project, a new relationship or renew something that has been put aside for a later date and it goes on. Um, and then it finishes with um, da -da 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 -da. when your will is aligned with the will of spirit and your intention is focused upon what you wish to have happen, there will be fulfillment and the promise is kept. Um, so you could use like the last sentence of the italics as um, an affirmation to manifest what you want. So for instance, if I just choose, there's a waterfall card in here, the, the last the last sentence of that is keep your focus on your solar plexus, solar plexus and your breath, breathing through any tension. Relaxing and yielding to the movement that is occurring at any given moment makes your life effortless. So you could use the last sentences as um, as, as a way to manifest and, and move forward. So I really like this deck. I have had it for 10 to 11 years. I've got... Um, I've got a couple of decks from Stephen Farmer and the Spirit Animal, Spirit Animal Oracle Guide um, from Stephen Farmer, which is also very good. I've talked about it before, but I'm, if, if you're really interested, I will leave me a link and I'll, I'll do a book review at, at a later date. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's this week's kind of Whitwell unboxing. So this is the Earth Magic Oracle. I'll show you again once more. Um, and you can still get it, it's still available everywhere. Um, I'll leave links down below as to, to uh, sort of Amazon and places like that where you can get it from. And it is a lovely deck. It's a lovely deck to draw a card of the day. It's a lovely deck. I've done the five card reading that's in there to kind of get yourself around a particular issue. Um, and it is nice, it's a really nice deck. It's very gentle. There are nods in here too, to the tarot, not very many, and they are, they are just nods, and I've got to think now, trying to find what I'm looking for. Um, bear with. I'm back. So there are nods in here to the tarot as well, and I do notice that a lot of the decks that you look through, the oracle decks, you will often find kind of nods to back to the original tarot. And I, I do tend to get the feeling that they are a respectful acknowledgement to kind of where it all started. I, I don't think anything can more devious of that. Maybe that's just me, I don't know. But for instance, so this particular card always reminds me of the Two of Cups. I always think of the Two of Cups when I see this card. This particular card reminds me of the Sun from the Major Arcana. And this particular card reminds me of the Four of Wands, the Happy Family card. Um, now I know I've looked at this one before and often wondered if it could be um, the Six of Cups, but I get a much happier and more present energy off of this one. But I digress. So yeah, there are nods to the actual tarot in here too. And I think it's kind of right that you put a nod to the tarot in an Oracle deck because they are where it all started, aren't they? So that is this week's Raw Through Earth Magic by Stephen D. Farmer. Have a lovely week. I will see you next Tuesday and bright blessings, everyone.